we're going to continue talking about inverse trig functions. In particular, a trig function and its inverse cancel each other out. However, the following two conditions must hold before you can do this. First, you have to be sure that the innermost function, whatever it may be, is defined at the given value. Next, you must be sure the given value is in the range of the outer function. These are the two conditions we will check before canceling out a trig function and its inverse. First example, find the value of each of the following. Inverse cosine of cosine of negative 2 pi over 3. Before I go any further, remember cosine has a special property. I'm focusing on the cosine on the inside. Cosine is an even function, therefore it eats negative signs. So my expression is actually equal to what's on the screen here. Now let's check those two conditions. Before we can cancel out, we have to check the two conditions. <clears throat> First and foremost, is cosine of 2 pi over 3 defined? Does it give you a real number answer? And the answer is yes. You can take the cosine of any angle and it'll always be defined. Second, <laughs> look at cosine inverse on the outside. Is 2 pi over 3 in the range of cosine inverse? And the answer to that is yes. 2 pi over 3 is in the range. It's in the range of inverse cosine. Because remember, the range of inverse cosine is 0 to pi. So as cool as it may seem, the inverse and original function cancel each other out, leaving you with an answer of 2 pi over 3. Now you might be wondering, well, I could have just canceled out the inverse and the actual cosine function to begin with. And the answer is no. You have to check these two conditions always. <coughs> Part B. You may want to go ahead and try canceling out the two functions, but no, don't do that. You must check your first condition. Condition number one <clears throat> is tangent of 3 pi over 2 defined. That would be 270 degrees. That would be 270 degrees. <clears throat> That's the bottom portion of the unit circle, which has ordered pair 0, negative 1. Tangent of 3 pi over 2, that would be sine over cosine, negative 1 over 0. And guess what? That is not defined. So I can't pursue this question any further. Since the inner trig function is not defined at 3 pi over 2, the answer is undefined. So condition 1 was not met. Now, time for a brain teaser. <clears throat> First, sine of 5 pi over 8, is it defined? And the answer is yes, of course it is. Sine is defined for any, at any angle. So sine of 5 pi over 8 is defined. However, The range, so now I have to look at the range of the outer function of inverse sine. The range of inverse sine 
is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And my question for you is, does 5 pi over 8 fall in that range? <laughs> and it does not. So the range of sine inverse is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, but 5 pi over 8 is in quadrant 2. And this doesn't mean we stop and we give up. Because, furthermore, the sine of an angle in quadrant 2, sine is positive in quadrant 2. The sine of an angle, the sine function of an angle in quadrant 2, has the same value. as an angle in quadrant one, because sine is positive in quadrant one, sine is positive in quadrant two. So it doesn't matter where the angle is, you're gonna get a positive answer for sine either way. <clears throat> That's because sine is positive in both quadrants one and two. So what I have to do to make this inverse trig expression defined is I have to move 5 pi over 8 to quadrant 1. I have to move 5 pi over 8 to quadrant 1. <laughs> in other words, I'm literally taking a quadrant 2 angle and finding the reference angle in quadrant 1. <laughs> so I have pi minus 5 pi over 8, which is 8 pi over 8 minus 5 pi over 8, which gives me a quadrant 1 angle of 3 pi over 8. <clears throat> so 5 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, when you apply sine to these functions, you get the same answer either way. <clears throat> so we're going to take 5 pi over 8 and exchange it for 3 pi over 8. So replace 5 pi over 8 with 3 pi over 8. <clears throat> now, yes, sine is defined at 3 pi over 8. Yes, 3 pi over 8 is in the range of inverse sine. Now we can cancel out the inverse sine function and sine function, and the answer here is 3 pi over 8. <clears throat> so that one had a little bit of a trick to it. We had to take that inside angle measure and move it to a angle measure, which was defined in the range of the inverse sine function. <clears throat> now, just for fun, let's find the inverse of the trig function f of x equals 5 sine x minus 6 will state the domain and the range of the inverse. <clears throat> so first things first, I have the function f of x equals 5 sine x minus 6. <clears throat> I need to find the domain of the original function and then the range of the original function. Remember, I'm finding an inverse, so it's important that I find a domain that is one-to-one. -one. <clears throat> so my domain has to be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. <clears throat> my range, normally my range is negative one-to-one -one for the sine function, but we have some transformations happening here. We're taking our answer of the sine function, which is normally between negative 1 and 1, and we're multiplying it by 5, then we're taking away 6 by order of operations. <clears throat> so I'm going to multiply negative 1 and 1 both by 5. That gives you negative 5 comma 5. And then I'm going to take away 6 from each, 
which gives me negative 11 to negative 1. <laughs> that would be the domain and the range of this original function. Now time to find the inverse. <laughs> well, to find the inverse, I'm first going to write my function in terms of x and y. Because the key to finding an inverse is to switch x and y. x and y switch places. x and y switch places. <clears throat> then I want to solve for y. So add 6 to both sides, x plus 6 equals 5 sine y, divide both sides by 5, you get x plus 6 over 5 is sine y. <laughs> then all I have to do is apply the inverse sine function both sides. So you get sine inverse of x plus 6 over 5 is equal to y. Sine inverse and sine will cancel each other out on the right hand side. <clears throat> so my inverse function f inverse of x is sine inverse of x plus 6 over 5. <clears throat> that is the inverse trig function. Now time for the domain. Oops. And time for the range of the inverse. And there is really no math you have to do here because literally you can take the domain of the original and it's equal to the range of the inverse. So the range of the inverse is negative pi over two to pi over two. <clears throat> And the range of the original is equal to the domain of the inverse. So negative 11 to negative 1. And this answers the question. We have the inverse trig function. We have the domain and range of the original function. Then we have the domain and the range of the inverse. And that concludes our discussion on inverse trig functions for now. More to come soon. Thank you for watching.